Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a hot minute since I filmed a new video. I have had videos go up consistently-ish, as consistently as it can be in the summertime, but usually I just film a bunch of videos in one day and then edit them as the week goes on. You gotta do what you gotta do when you work full time. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please go ahead and subscribe down below. I usually upload every other day, usually on an even day. So today I'm filming this on the 7th of July. And this video is actually gonna go up today itself if I can make it work because I'm going to be swatching a very exciting package. I don't know if you guys can guess what it is off the title, but uh, if you're interested, just keep watching. Okay, so me being my crazy self, I decided to open this on camera. It just came in the mail. I ordered this on 4th of July, I wanna say. And it took a little bit longer to ship than usual. Usually I'll get packages from Sephora in about two days. This took about three, but that's okay. Packaging is really nice. Like they stuffed their boxes really well. And I got the receipt and some samples. Um, so we don't need to waste time on that. Lots of more stuffing. This was a 100 point perk I decided to check out. This is a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be, but these are the Makeup Forever Aqua Color Paints. And I actually swatched some of these in store and they felt really nice. Like I want to invest in them, but it's not something I re need right now. This is a really light taupey shade. I don't know if you can see it right there, but I will play with that and keep you guys posted. Apparently, I also cashed in on a mini sample, and this is the Dior Addict Ultra Gloss in the shade, I don't know, it's a 765, so if you guys are Dior fans, you probably know what that means, I have no idea. And this is the little lippy gloss that I got, and it's so cute. I think I'm going to need to start like a little miniature makeup collection, because these are like too cute to use. I just want to like collect them all. But uh, now on to the Piesto Resistance. Um, is that right? Did I say that right? I did pick up both of the Sephora Pro palettes. Actually, there's three of them. I picked up two. Of course, I had to pick up the warm one and then I picked up the editorial one just because there were some uh, green and bluish shades that were calling my name. So I thought it would be so, so fun for you guys if I swatch these. I'm going to swatch them on my hands, uh, obviously. There's a ton of shades in this and this is not a review. I'm just gonna swatch these for you guys. So seven times four is that 28 shades. And uh, you've probably seen these a bunch on the internet already. I saw a lot of people got their palettes this week. Some people were able to get them in store. Lucky for them. I had to wait and get it the old fashioned way online. Uh, but yeah, I was so glad when these launched and I couldn't decide so I got both because you know, if I don't end up liking these, I will take them back. These feel really nice and heavy, which I think is great. And there is a color card here talking about like different looks that you can create with it, which I think is great. So I'm most excited for actually both of them. Like I said, this isn't a review. It's just a swatch party, but these retail for $68.00. Looks like they have a 12 month shelf span and contain 1.2 grams per pan. So yeah, this is the editorial palette and it looks like it has a 12 month shelf life made in the USA and distributed by Sephora, USA, and San Francisco. Now these palettes were basically put together by Sephora's pro team, which is basically people that audition to be like they're pro artists, so it's very exciting. This is what the palette looks like on the inside. Again, editorial, very bright shades. Here are all the names of the product, which is kind of annoying. I wish they had, you know, put that on the palette itself for $68. You know, I feel like that's a very high ticket item. They could have probably taken that extra step. Like first impressions, this reminds me so much of like Visart. It reminds me a lot of the Natasha Denona layout. Um, you guys know the Warmoth palette, which we'll look at next. Uh, definitely a lot of people are saying that's a dupe for the Sunset palette and it's half the price. So it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, so let me get started. I think I'm gonna do 
four at a time. So let's dip into the first set of shades here. They're they're pretty. Let's see how they swatch. I just like to do one swipe just so we can see pigmentation. And uh, they're looking pretty pigmented, I must say. Um, so this is the first row, um, and this first shade is Porcelain. Um, the orange matte shade is called Tangerine. Next shade is called Champagne. It's like a beautiful champagne a gold shade. And then the next shade is Pink Quartz, which is like a beautiful rose gold pink shade. Okay, so here is the next row. There, This is a really fun row. I love the two neon shades in the middle. They're definitely colors that I don't have in my collection. Um, so the first shade is, that shade is called White Gold. The next one is Amy, which is like a beautiful hot coral shade. I've definitely never seen anything like that before. Next shade is Jeffrey, which is a beautiful lime green shade. And one of the reasons why I bought this palette. And then the next shade is Wendy G, um, which is a beautiful, great, like vibrant gold shade. So right away, I'm thinking they're a little bit powdery, but overall not bad at all okay guys so here is the next four shades i hope you can see these these are so beautiful i love this palette i'm gonna pick it up and show it to you once i'm done swatching but this first shade in this row and the first shade in the second row um there's a row of four pastel shades actually let me just show you right now these pastel shades right here they're totally giving me kat von d alchemy vibes like I don't actually have the Alchemy palette or the Alchemist palette. Those like pastel highlighting shades, that's going to be this um, row for you right here. So if you wanted that palette, if you end up picking this one up, I think it would be a good dupe. I'm loving this next shade. The pastel-y shade is called Rose Quartz. Um, the hot pink is called Eliza D, which is a beautiful shade. Helen P is another reason I wanted to pick up the palette because it's a beautiful bluish green matte shade. And then the shade Lou is honestly beautiful. It is a duochrome gold to green flip and it's honestly gorgeous. I hope you guys can see it. I hope my camera is picking it up. But these shades are so, so pretty right now and I'm really loving these swatches. So now I'm going to move on. I'm actually swatching this way. Um, just because I only have like four clean fingers to work with. And then, um, so now I'm going to go ahead and swatch this row right here, which is going to be the fourth row in the palette. These mattes are definitely vibrant. I love this palette because it has like a little bit of everything. There's some regular neutral shades. There's some fun, crazy colors. Literally gorgeous. So here is the next row. I love this. There's a hot pink. Definitely giving me like Urban Decay electric palette vibes. This beautiful like seafoam green. And then this shade, this bronzy shade is gorgeous. It's actually, it looks coppery, but it has a pink duochrome. Oh my God, it's amazing. So these shades are Juliet T, which is that first one. The next shade is T Tila. Tila. And then that green shade is called Grass, and the last shade is called Caroline. And these are honestly beautiful shades. Okay, so here are the finger swatches from the next row. The mattes are definitely very powdery. They're kicking up a lot of dust. But, you know, I think that might make them very blendable. We'll have to see. I definitely, like, when I blow on it, I can definitely see, like, product kick off the swatch so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but these shades are totally impressing me so here are the four I accidentally swatched the last shade over the blue shade but hopefully you guys can bear with me so this bluish purple shade is called moonstone pinky purple shade is called Maisha Sean is the blue shade and then Hector E is that beautiful shade right here which is a copper shade i feel like these are actually named after the pro team because i'm pretty sure maisha is in their youtube videos and so is isn't there a guy named david that does a lot of them too i feel like the, some of these names are of the pro team but correct me if i'm wrong i'm just guessing based off of just like watching some of their youtube videos the texture of the shimmer shades definitely reminds me of Natasha Denona. They're very like crumbly, but a lot of people really like Natasha Denona, so 
you might like that but look at this white it's like super flaky I don't do you see that I don't particularly enjoy that but yeah these shades are so pretty look at this electric blue shade and then this beautiful green right here so let me tell you what the names of that is that row is so we have that white shade which is super flaky don't like that one is ice electric violet is next and then we have Chris which is a beautiful electric blue shade and then the last shade is David so right there like I said I think David is on the pro team he's in a lot of their videos the ball guy so I think some of these shades are named after their pro members okay and then we have the last row in the editorial palette there's a beautiful silver, this plummy purpley shade, a darker blue, and a black shade. So I'm just going to swatch that on my wrist here. And um, the silver shade definitely swatched very, very sheer. So I'm not really sure what's up with that. I guess I could try and build it up a little bit for you guys. But these are the smoky shades in the palette. So again, definitely not very everyday. The black definitely has shimmer in it. So I don't know how you guys are going to feel about that. But this first shade is called Silver Coin. Then we have 80. And then Dina and... Il, il, il -D? I -L -D -E. so whatever however you say that but these are the entire swatches of the editorial palette I must say I love all of these shades don't really particularly like the smoky shades don't really like some of the shimmer shades they're very crumbly little bit concerning look at how messy the palette is now after I'm done swatching it I don't know if my camera is going to pick that up for you guys it's too soon to tell my thoughts on this palette I definitely Definitely um, appreciate the quality of the packaging and things like that. I appreciate the thought they put into the shades, but I am going to have to perform, see how these perform on the eyes before I tell you anything about these. But yeah, let's move on to the next palette because I'm sure you guys are dying to see that one as well. Okay guys, so here is the packaging for the warm palette. Now I'm sure you guys have definitely seen this one. Uh, pretty much I think everyone that wanted one of these palettes really wanted the warm one. So of course I, you know, had to get it as well. Because, you know, who can get enough of warm tones these days? So like I said, I didn't even open these up. I just sat down and started filming. So here we go. This is what it looks like. Again, looks exactly like the editorial one, except the writing is in gold. This one is in blue. I wonder what they did with the cool tones one. Not quite sure. Wow, this is gorgeous. <laughs> this is definitely a combination of the Morphe palette slash like the Morphe 35O palette meets the Natasha Denona Sunset palette because it doesn't have like a vibrant yellow like the Natasha Denona palette. These shades are definitely more muted warm tones and the glitters don't seem like bam shimmery. You know, they look shimmery, but we'll have to swatch and see. But this definitely is giving me more of a Morphe vibe than the Natasha Denona palettes. Okay, I keep telling you guys I'm going to return this palette and I am planning on doing that. I just have one more video I want to film, but... Here they are held up next to each other. As you can see, the Sephora palette just to me personally just looks a little bit more muted. Uh, but again, I'm going to stop reviewing because I can seem to stop talking about the palettes. I'm going to talk about comparisons in another video. But let's swatch. So again, I'm going to do four at a time. So let's start off. There's a lot of matte, you know, crease colors, brow bone highlights. They really tried to, I think, target every single skin tone not so fun to watch because it's not as full of fun colors as the other one was but here are the first four shades um there's a cream shade this creamy shade is actually a shimmer duochrome really beautiful peachy gold flip a beautiful like taupey brown that's gonna work in most creases and then a shimmery brown shade let me give you guys the names of all of these so we have uh canvas then we have sand, hazelnut, and brown sugar. So okay, so here is the next row. This gold, I've never seen a shade swatch so beautifully. It just glided on to my hands. It was beautiful. So I'm going to give you guys the names. Um, so we have oat, which again, you can use in your brow bone. Brass, which is the very, very vibrant gold coppery shade. 
khaki, which reminds me a lot of Jaclyn Hill shade Pukey. It's one of those like our like uh, makeup geek tiki cut, like a browny, yellowy, gorgeous shade. And then the last shade is a, one of my favorite kind of shades in palettes. It's called Caramel, and it's a matte brown shade. The next row looks really promising. I'm really digging one of the shades this row, so let me swatch them for you and show them to you. I don't know that I love the mattes in this palette. They're very choppy. So we have, um, let me read out the names to you guys. We have Biscotti, which is another peachy matte. Um, so they're giving you lots of different brow bone options. Then we have Clay, which is a beautiful brown orange shade. I love those shades. And there's a beautiful peach shimmer shade. And finally, Sep Sepia, uh, which is a beautiful warm brown as well. Peachy was a little bit lackluster. I don't know, these shades, there's a lot of fallout. So we'll really have to see how these perform on the lid. Because for $68, I'm really expecting like all kinds of magical unicorns to be like shooting out of this palette. Okay, the shimmers just swatch so beautifully in this row. So let me tell you the shade names. Uh, the first shade is right here. This is called Camel. It's a beautiful, you know, camel colored brown. This gold is called Copper and it glided on beautifully. Brick is this red shade and it's gorgeous. Like just all over the lid. Like wouldn't that be stunning? And then this last shade is called Coconut Shell. And I would say that's pretty accurately close to the color of a coconut shell. Um, this one is all named like, you know, normal. It's not named like funky like names of people. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm really excited to swatch this yellow shade. So let's go ahead and dig right into that. Okay, so here are the next row of colors. Um, like I said, the yellow isn't as vibrant as some of the other palettes that have come out recently for sunset looks. Um, that shade is called Ochre. Then we have Bronze. And then we have Terracotta, which is, of course, another warm orange shade. And then um, this last shade is Cold. Okay, so here are the swatches on my fingers of the second to last row. This whole row is matte. And I've gotten so dark this summer. I hope you guys can actually see my swatches. I can't believe how much darker my, my hands are. You guys have to see like my sunburn because um, you can see it on my ring, like my ring finger. Like look at how much darker I've gotten. I tan so easily and I'm not complaining. I love it. Uh, but it's just, it's kind of crazy to imagine how much darker I've gotten. So next is the shade Saddle. And then we have a shade called Adobe. And then we have one called Burnt Umber. And then we have one called Cedar. A lot of these shades are very repetitive, like the names. Because, like, you know, MAC has a shade called Saddle. They have a paint pot called Ochre. Like, obviously, it's hard to come up with, like, original names every time, like, for whatever brand. But it's just kind of funny um, when you hear a name that's, like, iconic, like MAC Saddle or MAC Soft Ochre. You automatically associate a shade like Ochre to be, like, a nude lid primer. And this is, like, a vibrant yellow, so it's kind of funny. Right. Let's go ahead and swatch the last row. I have so much fallout. I'm going to have to wash this shirt. Okay, so again, this is another matte row as well with featuring some very beautiful shades. So let's go ahead and swatch these for you guys. Let's see how pigmented the black is. That's not bad. I would say that's pretty pigmented. I don't personally use a lot of black, but I know a lot of people love having a black eyeshadow in their palettes. So yeah. Okay, so... To give you guys the names, we have Auburn, we have Sandstone, we have Chestnut. Last shade is called Obsidian. So these are all the swatches of the Warm Palette. So those are all my swatches of this Warm Palette. As you can see, again, there is a lot of kick up in this palette, so I'm not sure how that's going to work on the face. But I hope you guys enjoyed my swatches of this palette. Okay guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you found these swatches helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if you are planning on picking up any of these palettes. Have you had your eye on them? Are you gonna be passing on them? Like if you aren't planning on getting them, can you let me know why? 
overall just to summarize first impression I love all the shades especially in the editorial palette I don't really have one palette with all those shades in it I think it's definitely gonna be a palette that's gonna allow you to be very creative as far as the warmth palette I'm not very impressed with it because it's very expensive and the shades aren't really anything out of the ordinary I think I can pull between like my ColourPop Yes Please palette my modern Renaissance palette and all these other warm palettes I have I feel like there's all those shades I already have um, even though I hate on the Natasha Denona sunset palette I think the sunset palette has a unique more unique combination of shades because they have some of those beautiful dual chromes some really banging you know shimmers which I think the Sephora palette does too so I'm not gonna ramble on about it but um, yeah hope you guys like these um, swatches I will have reviews on these palettes up hopefully soon bear with me guys i have so many products and like no time to review them thank you so much for watching this video again if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do that down below i am going to have a giveaway coming up very soon for you guys um it might be something that everyone wanted that is currently out of stock and i swatched it for you guys but i haven't reviewed it for you yet so Keep your eyeballs peeled for that giveaway. I haven't done a giveaway in a really long time. So I hope you guys are really, really excited for that. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.